In recent years, universities have seen protests erupt over sometimes controversial speakers. So-called cancel culture has been considered toxic. These modern day examples of fundamentalism, though, are seen by some as eating away at a democracy founded in part on a belief in reason and rational debate. A new book, Minds Wide Shut, How the New Fundamentalisms Divide Us, examines this rigidity of thought that leaves many Americans convinced that their worldview is right and closed off to evidence that could persuade them otherwise. Joining us now to share some of their thoughts are the co-authors, Northwestern University President and Professor of Economics, Morton Shapiro, and Gary Saul Morrison, Professor of the Arts and Humanities and also Slavic Languages at Northwestern University. And of course, there is plenty to discuss uh, with President Shapiro, and we're going to get to that a little bit later on in the broadcast. But first, let's talk about the book, please. Um, President Shapiro, you know, we touched on it, uh, but please describe the kind of fundamentalism that you all are writing about in this book. Well, Brandis, it's wonderful to be back on Chicago tonight. So and I have been on with previous books. I just wish we were there in person in the studio. But this book sort of continues a line of thinking that we've had and uh, it manifests itself in an undergraduate course we've been doing together on dialogue for 11 years. And in the book, we argue that there are certain forces in economics and in politics and in religion and in the academy, particularly in the humanities that are fundamental fundamentalist by nature, and that in order to understand how they rose together, uh, that could help us figure out a way to move ahead into a world where dialogue plays a larger role. And you, Gary Saul Morrison, sorry, were you going to say something? Go ahead. No, no, I, I think that, that's the point, that uh, we need to move ahead so we, we can restore uh, atmosphere where people are free to have different opinions and actually learn from each other. What made you want to write this book? Gary Saul Morrison, I'll, I'll leave that one to you as well. Well, we see uh, you know, a, a dangerous trend, dangerous to democracy taking place and various disciplines hardening at the same time. And we were hoping that we could persuade people to be more open-minded to realize they can learn from each other, that it really makes sense to live in a world where you have opinions when you don't regard everything that you believe as absolutely certain. Uh, President Shapiro, why do you think we have seen this rise in fundamentalism in our way of thinking in America? You know, I, I think we live in silos in the way that we never did. You know, Saul and I grew up and we'd watch CBS News or NBC or ABC, and we basically hear the same story, or maybe we read Time, a little bit more conservative than Newsweek, but I don't think there was a lot of question about the facts and the objective truth. And now, of course, we live in silos, right? I mean, everybody, whether you're watching Fox News or CNN, or you're reading this columnist or that columnist, and, you know, I think we live in echo chambers. The good thing about echo chambers is it's very, you know, it's supporting your view and, and it's very comfortable. But it's bad for democracy because it makes it easier to vilify and think everyone who doesn't agree with you is the personification of evil. Democracy depends on debate. Uh, echo chambers say there's no reason to debate. And let's get into that a little bit more. Um, Professor Morrison, why is this such a threat to democracy? Well, you know, I'm a Russian specialist, so I, of course, immediately see where this can lead. That is to, look, if there's, if you are absolutely right and everybody else is either stupid or evil, there is no reason not to have a one-party state. And once you have a one-party state, literally anything can happen because there'll be no way of objecting to it, of changing it. And you get a dynamic, a slide towards greater and greater tyranny once you have a one-party state. And uh, a one-party state will happen when people don't, think that, well, they have their belief, but they're only opinions. They could be wrong. People, no matter how sure you are, you could be wrong. You believe in a, you have an opinion, but if you believe that it's a God-given belief or a belief sanctified by science or that only good people think this way, then you're headed for um, a one-party state uh, and the uh, elimination of, of real dialogue. 
Professor Morrison, do you see um, connections between this, you know, mindset of fundamentalism and only believing that your way is the way to think um, and what happened at the Capitol on January 6th? Yes, I think it probably is. I mean, um, that would be one of, of several incidents where, um, uh, you know, what, what, what struck me is how um, angry people were, not just at the other side, but at the, you know, moderates in their own side, or, or even the, the less than pure in their own side, like um, how angry they were at Mike Pence, for instance. Um, that, that doesn't allow for any difference of opinion at all. So that might be one example. Um. Uh, President Shapiro, you know, universities are supposed to be places uh, where people are exposed to many different ideas and where students can learn to um, to study uh, an idea or a viewpoint that may be very different from one that they themselves hold. Are you seeing this kind of fundamentalism uh, on university campuses? Well, here's where Saul, Saul and I don't always agree, Brandis. We've been teaching and writing together for a long time. But, you know, as you pointed out, I'm a professor of economics. There's a chapter in the book that argues that economics really stays out of politics in, in, a, in a great way. It's not that we don't advise in, in terms of the effectiveness of policy, but we don't let our underlying political ideological beliefs affect our work. And we argue in that book that most economists, some of us might be more liberal, more conservative, but we pretty much agree on what the minimum wage should be, what to do about health care, what about climate change, some difference about a wealth tax, but most of the things you know, we, we do our theoretical models. I'm an applied econometrician. We do our data and we estimate our models and we present the answer, whether it's the answer you would hope for or not, and we play it really straight. Now, Saul comes from the humanities. is a little bit more skeptical of that, but I think that much of the academy, despite the way we're always critiqued, you know, the STEM fields, and again, my field economics, many, of the quantitative social sciences and some of the non-quantitative social sciences and humanities really do play it straight. You know, what we're trying to do, Brand, is to, of course, is teach people how to think, not what to think. And I happen to think that we do a very good job at that. Professor Morrison, we've got about 20 seconds left. And I know that the two of you don't always agree, so I want to give you the opportunity to respond as well. Nobody that I know would dare to say they, let's say they were a Republican. It wouldn't happen in the humanities, just couldn't do it. Um, is a singularity of view, and it's explicit that you must be political, that otherwise you, you simply don't, you're not with the times. So now that's not true in economics, and it's not true elsewhere, but of course I live in the humanities, so I will see it more than Morty does. Okay, we'll have to leave it there for now. Uh, my thanks to Professor Gary Saul Morrison for joining us. And of course, um, President Shapiro will be back later on in the program to talk about leading the university through a pandemic, his decision to step down next year, and a hiring controversy. Thanks to you both for joining us. Thank you.